Cheers, guys. How's it going? VMC177 tuning and a tuning clutch, of course. It has the stronger circlip. It does have CNC machined Honda linings and it has eight additional welding points. For more details about the do it yourself tuning clutch on the Cosa 2 base, see the other guide I already published. Uh, what I want to show you is what you have to change at the clutch lid that this clutch fits in here. And as you can see, it does not fit. Light. And that's because it is a 120. 5 lit and it has this small beam so the very first thing you have to remove is this beam here that's number one number two because it's quite narrow with an original clutch and now it has an additional ring and you know the clutch sits in here and it doesn't run 100 percent straight and smooth so it wiggles a bit and the bearings get more uh, tolerance so it will move so we need a little bit of space between clutch lid and the clutch basket I'm gonna show you this when this beam is removed the second thing we remove we make a little bit more space here that's two and additional it's often forgotten is when you turn this lever then this edge here jumps into this rounding kind of it can you see that it comes out you see it gets higher and this is the reason why you always have to round this edge here a bit to ensure when you push the clutch pull the clutch then the lever goes up so one two all around the lid and three this edge here three three two this is all around here and one removing this beam Two questions on hand. Will it influence the oil coming to the push rod? Because, yeah, it looks like that this is the channel for the oil to guide more oil here. It will not, because the thing is that on the outside of the clutch, there is no oil. There's just a little bit of oil, fog, dust which is sprayed in there. I usually make this grease test, so I put grease all around here to see, to check if it still stripes or not, if I have to take more material away. And I also put grease here when I mount it onto the plate and the push rod here. So, and after many kilometers, this grease here is still there. It means no oil is getting there to wash it away so there's just a little bit fog coming from this side onto the clutch Second question. Yeah, you cannot identify a 200 or 125 lid with this number here. Second question is, do you need to buy a 200 cc clutch lid? The same with the engine with the cover at the case. You do not. You can just take the 125 and modify it. And that's what I'm going to show you. Where the oil comes from? There is another guide already published, it comes from here. Check it out, I'm gonna put an info card 
in the video then. So let's start it. Let's remove this beam here. Compressed air mill we're gonna use. Let's put this in safety. Cheers, by the way. Now, now this fits in here, but you see there's not so much space here. The cause of it, the ring, is smaller than the CNC ones and it has 11.9. Nine. Measure the lid. One to one point five. One to one point. Yes. So it has one to one point five and the basket with the ring has 119 this means that there is only 2.5 millimeter space 119 121.5 and earrings get tolerances so it will wiggle a bit and perhaps not everything is centered perfectly so it will sit perhaps on one side so this means we do need second step to just take away a lot of material or quite some material here no worries you don't break through there is enough meat let's do it That was it with number two. You see, very easy. The question on hand would be, do you need this professionally turned out? You know, that fancy schmancy, expensive clutch lids available at the shops. Uh, yeah, that's again feel good tuning. As you see, it is very simple. Go to a nice lad, to a mate who has a uh, compressed air miller and it is done within a few minutes it's closed anyway so no one can see inside and this does the job and the job is to just provide enough space for a tuning clutch and final work at the Clutch lid is number three. This lever here. And now you see, we took away material here, and when you turn this, an edge is coming up. And just for safety reasons, we're gonna remove it. Was it?
And the fourth spot is there is a beam here in the engine case. It's already removed here. Wait. Yeah, I'm gonna take the clutch out in a minute so you can see. There is a beam that needs to be removed that a 200 cubic clutch fits. Skeptic if this ever worked. And the beam was here. I'm assuming that's the wrong direction. This one. LED light. Oh, come on, that's better. So it was up till here, it was removed, and now the big clutch basket fits. <laughs> The thing with the clutch lids, this is cast iron and it also has tolerances. At a certain engine I nearly went bonkers and then I found the reason for it. The thing is that these clutch lids, this, so the rounding here, how high this is, distance from where it is sitting on the engine case and where the push rod sits. There are different ones out there, about two millimeters, up to two millimeters, and two millimeters is a lot for a clutch to work properly. So what I started doing is I started measuring this a certain distance. The distance from the push rod surface to here, where the lid actually sits on the engine case not this edge this edge here how do i do that i'm just measuring somehow down here it's 27 this one is 24 3 minus 3 and now we need this distance, which is 3.94. So we have 20 millimeter, which means this is a good clutch lid. I'll then put into the video the table I made I measured quite a lot of them and got an average value to identify if it is a good or a bad clutch lid and actually this goes down to I guess below 18 and with 20 it is over the average when I'm right so what is it again it is the distance from surface push rod to where clutch lid actually sits on the engine because the push rod sits here and pushes onto the clutch there's the plate and so the clutch lid defines if the push rod kind of sits here or sits here and two millimeters is a lot and this can decide if a clutch works or not so make sure you use a clutch lid with the average wall volume make sure you use a clutch lid with the average value to ensure that there is enough space between the lid and the surface of the clutch beam
which washer I'm using. This is just the standard 177 tuning, so the clutch springs are not that hard because the clutch presses in this direction. So the one with the teeth are is fine. Um, but for stronger engines where you need stronger oh that's my wife on the phone yes dinner ready i know <laughs> um what was this ringtone so wife coming soon so for stronger engines take the other washer without the teeth it's stronger these do like to the crack but that's a not so strong engine so it is fine how to mount the clutch make sure you know where the woodruff key is and the groove inside the clutch try to align it then put it on the stump and when it doesn't go in there's one trick you do you take a screwdriver and just move a little bit that's the primary here you just move a little bit the primary that this two sprockets the one of the clutch basket and the primary just fit each other perfectly and then the clutch does slide in so it's dinner time for me now see you guys cheers <laughs> a beast! Sorry, yeah. Bist du denn, was ist das ein Beast jetzt? <laughs>